Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethysta Herrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Paw Publications website, Gender Identity Today. This content is brought to you by subscribers of Gender Identity Today. If you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for your support. But if you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as other writing and other podcasts by our contributors, please consider subscribing using links that you're going to find in the show notes. So today, I am very honored to have my good friend Shannara Quissel with me. Hi, Shannara. Hello, Amy. <laughs> Shannara is an attorney, a board member of the Colorado LGBTQ Bar Association, and my personal favorite, executive director of the Colorado Name Change Project. Um, that was actually how Shannara and I met. We connected when I needed help changing my own name in 2022. And, uh, you know, I like to think we struck up, you know, a friendship. Um, I mean, I'm not wrong, am I? Oh, oh, babe. Oh, babe. You you answered that a little slower than I'd hoped, but... um, And everybody, you can notice she has not actually answered the question. Besties for life! <laughs> right. So, my motivation for doing this whole, this whole program is because um, I've written a lot about this in, in my own work. Names and, and gender markers are actually important aspects of who we are, important aspects of our identity. The bummer, to me anyway, um, about both gender marker and names is that we don't choose them. You know, at, at birth, somebody else uh, decides our, our gender marker, actually our sex marker, I suppose, mm -hmm. and your parents give you a name. And, and surprisingly, that doctor and our parents don't know us very well S straight after birth. I know, hard to believe. Many people are, are taken aback by that. But so with the work that you've done, Shannara, you know, you help many people, including me, choose labels for ourselves. And so I wanted to talk about that. Yeah. Um, let, let me, first of all, how are you doing? You doing pretty well? I get all, cool. I am, I'm doing pretty darn good. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay. You know, what, what time? It's like six, six o'clock on a, almost seven o'clock on a, yeah. two, when? I don't know what day it is. Actually, what the day is it? 462nd day of February. <laughs> oh, I had no idea. <clears throat> where, where, where was that going? Oh, yes. Um, so, I mean, I know you, so you've been an attorney, so we are both in Colorado. We're not handing out addresses, but I know you've been an attorney in Denver um, mm -hmm. for a few years now, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. You know, okay. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so tell me, and cause I mean, you know, when I, when I've known you before you, you do other work. And so I'm really curious, you know, first of all, if you can just explain, you know, why would you want to get into, you know, any kind of law but sure. really the bigger question to me, like, why is this cause important to you? Why are names and gender markers? Why is that your, your crusade? Sure. Um, so I went to law school um, because I, and this is, this is the answer that you'll hear often because I wanted to make a difference. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to make an impact on the world that I occupy because it is so messed up and mm. like, and I, I, so I grew up in a very small town. Well, eh, ish, um, relative, uh, sure. in New Mexico. And I grew up with a lot of people had a lot of distrust for, um, and d disdain really for the legal system, for the judicial system. Um, okay. and as I got older, like I, I, saw why because there there's such inequalities there's such a um like there's gatekeeping you can't sure. access the system that is penalizing you 
So you feel hopeless, you feel helpless, and and there's that distrust. Um, I dabbled around in a few things like I was passionate about, like um, I did psychology, I did music, um, but I finally got my way into the judicial system as a court clerk, okay. and I... I loved it. I loved it. I loved seeing all of the different types of pleadings and documents coming across. I loved being the person that hoi polloi would come in and they got me. Like they didn't know the first thing to file. Stuff sure. wasn't done properly, but I was the one that they got. And I wanted to take the time to explain to them, hey, this is what you need to file. This is why. So mm -hmm. like, I have these forms right here, let me just give them to you, or go home, here's a list of everything that you need to fix and come back. And seeing these people kind of relax, being like, oh my god, I actually got someone in the court who's explaining things to me. Right, and right. And yeah, sorry, this is kind of a long-winded way. No, um, not at but all. But I ended up, like I ended up being able to have the privilege of going to law school sure. and like I become increasingly disillusioned and disenchanted with the state of our country um, mm -hmm. for a lot of different things just seeing people denied justice seeing people being persecuted sure. seeing sure. people for things that were completely out of their control or that wasn't even a shouldn't have even been a freaking issue um, I got involved with uh, the, so I went to University of Denver. Um, mm -hmm. I got involved with the DU Outlaws, which is the LGBT uh, student law group. And through that, that's how I got involved with the Name Change Project. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So be before you asked me, you there was a, two, was a two-parter. Yeah, that was a two-parter It was question. a two-parter. No, but, I can't but you, well, I'll, I'll repeat it, but cause I, cause it was interesting the way you described that initially, you said, um, they, that people didn't have access to the justice system that was penalizing them. I think is mm -hmm. how you, I mean, hopefully that was mm -hmm. as verbatim as I, I didn't write it down, but, yeah. um, what's interesting is that you turned it into the justice system supporting them. I mean, when you were at, when you were a clerk, mm -hmm. you were saying, "Here's the appropriate yep. stuff. Go fill this out." Yep. But that's how it ought to be, right? I mean, the we law should... should work for people, not the other way around. Absolutely, like, right? It's bonkers to think otherwise, but that's the way the system is. And the other thing is, in in, in we could go into all, all kinds of different things, <laughs> but the system is actually not broken. The okay. system is working exactly as it was designed to, oh, to, it was, to work. Okay. It Just was the designed, design though you're saying. Correct. Is, it was designed okay. by the people in power oh. to keep everyone else under. I see. And so that's why when they're like, well, the system's broken. No, it's not. It is working exactly the so way it was designed system, to work, yeah. which means it is flawed from its very core, but I it's see. the system that we have right now. So, what I want to try to do is work within those confines sure, to make it as accessible and, and fair as, as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just actually. <laughs> so oh, dare we say, <laughs> dare oh, we just, put the I just know. in justice? <laughs> How crazy that is. Right. The second half of that question was just why, and you started to go into it. You you were you were part of a um, of a group in in law school. Like, why are names and gender markers important to you? Like, what's oh, the gosh, yeah. why is it a cause? Why is it so, your cause? So I got involved with um, the Colorado Name Change Project during law school, and first off, I was like, "Holy crap, this is." This is why I was going to law school. This is literally a grassroots way for me okay. to use my privilege, my position, my knowledge, and make it work for people. 
Sure. What? Sure. Um, the other thing is that, so the founder, and we can talk a little bit more about this um, mm-hmm. later, um, but the founder is just a consummate badass. Like, I respect her so much. Um, and I learned, and I still learn so much from her. And so when she was like, hey, you know, um, do you want to get in on this? We could really use some help. I was like, count me in. And I remember the first workshop that I went to, she was leading the workshop. I was there to just kind of help provide support. And I was there as a notary um, uh, to notarize people's uh, petitions when they were done. And I oh, was, sit it in, there. was it in person? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our workshops used to be oh, only in person. Oh, shoot. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. Wow. Our workshops used to be only in person. That would have um, been so cool. Wow. Oh, my gosh. But, like, seeing actual people coming into the workshop a little nervous, like, do I have the right room? Am I in the right oh, place? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know, and also, like, hey, you know, like, I'm I'm here to do something that's so impactful to me. Yes. And then by the end of the workshop – we're printing out court documents for them. I am notarizing their signature on a document that's literally going to change their life. Yes. Tell me how, how, how could that not impact me? How could that not, how could you not be so moved by that? There you go. I, right, I'm speechless, which is atypical. You, you know me enough that it's atypical. I guess you know the thing is that I don't know when when I started when I started this the whole just gender transition in general. You know, there's there's a lot of um, maybe you've seen it, but you know there there isn't a whole lot of support. Mm-mm. in this country for Mm-mm. people trying to transition gender. Right. And so when I came upon Colorado name change project, I got to tell you, I went, wait a minute. This like, these are, these are, these are people willing to, to help, you know, uh, for lack of a better way of saying it, like my people. Yeah. And, and yeah. I guess I, I was surprised by, it. I asked the question because when I, for, when I went to the first workshop that you did, which was mm-hmm. online, I was amazed that anybody would do it. I think flat out. I mean, I asked that question. I mean, honestly, thinking the, thinking about this now, I ask that question because I don't expect anybody to want to help my community. Now, that being said, I mean, I'm transgender. And then I know that the Colorado Name Change Project works also with non-binary people. Mm-hmm. But I like I looked at um, you have a, a series of blog posts that I know you're working on, too. Yeah. And you are not talking immediately about transgender or non-binary people. Sure. It, it, which I guess, you know, I got to tell you, I started, I started looking around and I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah, I guess other people might, you know. Right. Because, you know, you you get a, a parents who who name you. Uh, I don't know, Shithiad, Ganoria. Yeah, right. And you go, eh, mm, yeah, I'm going to really change that. <laughs> doesn't right. really fit me. I'm going to change that, yeah. Or, so, you know, you're one of Elon Musk's poor kids. Right, Sorry. or you're named like Apple. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know. Right. I, or, or, you know, even worse, because like the, the the original example I was going to do, and then I said, nah, don't do it, Amy, not going to be funny. But now I'm doing it, you'll see. Do like, it. what if you, you you get born and you're like, you're 12 years old and you go, oh, my God, wait a minute. I was named Robert E. Lee. Oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, oh, hey. We just got to um, that in our history class, and what so the sure. hell, mom and dad? Like, <laughs> right? You know what? Really? I want to change. I want to change my name to something like you know, Lemon Fresh Pledge. Yes, I something that doesn't have be... you know horrible, <laughs> racist, and bad historical connotations. Right. Do you know, though, when I was so when I was in graduate students and I, uh, when I was in graduate school and I was in Georgia, that like I brought up Shithiad 
which, yeah. which sounds sounds funny, right? Yeah. But I knew a dude who said he knew somebody in high school. He said there were like, like there were parents, oh. and I, I think he grew up in Baltimore. Maybe okay. it was. Was mm-hmm. it Baltimore? I don't know. It was in the general at Maryland. Yeah, it was Maryland. I know it was. Okay. Um, anyway, he grew up in, in Maryland and he said, you know, there were parents who would do that. There were just mm-hmm. Shithiad and Gonoria were two of them. Oh, wow. There was one where um as Weepe was another one that he that and okay. I'm like What Okay. What parent is doing this? Right. So and I mean, and so that, you know, that's why I had the point at the beginning. We don't choose these things. We are assigned to mm-hmm. them. Right. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, assigned sex at birth is called assigned sex at assigned. birth because right. we had no, you know, say in this. Um so I've like gone on for at least five they, minutes you're, here. But you're, you're just stating and everything. And I don't remember being handed a checklist of saying, so – Right. What would you like? Check what you want. Don't what you don't. Like (laughs) nobody remembers that. No, no. I was born, and you know, for the I'm still having trouble having my mother. You know, Mm -hmm. respect some of my decisions. So you know, and I'm fifty something. Doesn't make a difference. Mold. Um, I'm old enough that I forgot how old I am. I That's never know true. how old I am. Like, I'm just like, I am 30 or 40 years old and I do not need this. <laughs> you know, I was, I had been writing, um, I don't know. Let me see. So I started writing in October of 2022, mm-hmm. I guess. And not even, I guess it was, that's true. And, you know, I turned it. So I was writing 52 years from October until March. Sure. And then after March, which is when I had a birthday, like if that wasn't entirely clear, which it probably was. But when I had a birthday, I was, I kept on, I kept on writing 52 years. I'm like, oh shit. I got to oh, wait. It's like, I can't oh, even wait. remember my own birth date <laughs> my, or my own age. It's birth date I got. My age, I don't. So, all right. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know. So, <laughs> So I get it. So so like my my question, why is this cause important to you, is actually, uh, it's like, I mean, it's obvious to you. It it is self-evident to you. How could, how, how, how could I not be? You put it like that and I go, yeah, good point. (laughs) It's just, it is. Like I, I was lucky enough to meet, like I said, to meet Emma, to be asked to be involved with this and I mean, that's, that's, that's all she wrote. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you when I, when I, cause you know, when I did my first searching around, I thought, well, Colorado name change project, certainly there must be like, you know, an Alabama name change uh, project, a Georgia right. name change. Pro- I mean, right. I just figured, well, you know, this is common and, 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 right. and uh, frequent. Right. Are Like, are there sister organizations even out there? Uh, no. Um, so if, 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 if I may, I'll, I'll tell you how the Colorado name change project was founded. Please. Yes. So Emma, um, and one of her very dear colleagues, um, they got together because Emma, so Emma's a Marine, um, like just out there kicking butt defending freedom like just uh, she's amazing um and she then uh left to go to law school okay so now she's also an attorney um and then when she was transitioning like she goes to change her name and she's like why in the hell is this so hard Okay. Like she's like, I'm an attorney and I am having trouble figuring <laughs> out exactly what forms I'm supposed to fill out. Oh, sure. oh, I'm supposed to get background checks. Okay, well let me reverse and go do that. And she was like, This is this is stupid. Like, if this is this hard for me as an attorney. Right, as an attorney, right. How incredibly difficult must this be for for everyone else, for non attorneys? Right, and for, so for she works like with me. So yeah. oh, sh- sh- 
I mean, well, well I had no idea. That's why dog. I went to. Well, I mean, and that's good. So <laughs> there it is. Ah. Um, but yeah, so she. Um, I, I just her I just spilled a drop of water down my front. <laughs> I do. I was. I was thinking it was going to be okay, and I pulled the water. Nope. You know, I'm not going to edit that out. By the way, you the, better the, not. The, I'll know if you. I'll know if you. Oh edit my it. gosh! I, no, no, no. There's no way I would edit that out. But yeah, I pulled. I pulled the straw out of my mouth, and it. And it. Um, and there was a ding too. Did you hear that, or was that just in? That my, was my phone. It was. Oh, okay. I thought it was. I wanted to that make sure it was phone. not just my. But I pulled my straw out, and and I went. Oh, oh. Splu. Anyway, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just thought, you know, you'd get a kick out of that. So. I love it. I love it so um, much. Um, <laughs> right. But yeah, so like, anyway, it's so hard to she, change your name. Mm-hmm. So she came up with the Colorado Name Change Project. And okay. it started as a website. Also, also, she's like incredibly tech savvy. Um, and so she put this website together. Okay. And <clears throat> pardon me. Um made it so that you could access like she made like a the form sure. generator. Right, sure. So you don't have to go looking for the court forms that you need. Right. Our website will do it for you. Um and then over time we've just developed it to be a comprehensive one-stop shop. Gives you sure. all of the information that you need step by step. Um, she wanted to bring this to the trans and non-binary community in Colorado as a whole. And so in partnership with the Transgender Center of the Rockies, we, uh, that's where she was doing the in-person workshops. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. So they're free, they're monthly. Um, and, uh, that's how, that's how I got involved was because I was a notary. So, oh, you're kidding me. That was, oh yep. my gosh. Yep. So folks, I find that very up. funny. <laughs> right. I just, you know, you know, the reason I became a notary back in like 20, what, 2012. Okay. Because I like stamping. I wanted to stamp. I just wanted to, I just wanted to stamp. I think so that's I like, a great reason. Right. Like, I think that's a great because you got the little the little in the little clippers thing thing right mm-hmm. you have the, yeah the clamp mm-hmm. I mean I don't know what the hell those are called but embossers for, thank you embossers you want me to take yeah. a drink again maybe that'll help yes um but, sorry that was a little like that was a little <laughs> subversive like <laughs> I know. Got me. um but I yeah know. so that's how I got um, involved because she was like. You know, you can come because you used to be able to roll up yeah. uh, to these workshops in person and we'd bring a printer, like um, everything like that. So that folks could just after the workshop, fill out the forms mm-hmm. and have them signed and notarized and ready to go once they get their background checks. OK, so, so they still had to go to a courthouse and. Um, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. OK. I wasn't sure if they if you like you could go, well, cool. Now we'll file all this for you but no they they uh, uh you do much. still have to go to the courthouse to do it but right. one of the anyway so that's how the Colorado name change project yeah. was founded um right. was uh to get back to your actual question um was to make it accessible sure. um name change project is all about ex- improving accessibility and removing sure. barriers whether that's legal barriers financial barriers um and so, uh, anyway, that's how the Colorado Name Change Project was founded. As far as sure. sister organizations, like, insert state name change project. I like Alabama Name Change Project. That's my they particular favorite right now. Oh, yeah. they need it. Um, Ten- Tennessee Name Change Project. Florida. So, unfortunately, name- Tennessee, and that's a thing. So, Tennessee... Uh, in Oklahoma, I know are two that will not that you cannot change your birth certificate at all, at all. Like a uh, gender like marker he, on your oh, you okay. can change your name, but you cannot change your gender marker like legislatively. Um, and so that's why like Tennessee needs one real bad. But like, yeah. but, but as even, far as even in case of error, I mean, because like in California, error, you could, you error could... is that's the only reason. 
So like, can't you just go? Like, okay, look, we made the error twenty three years ago. Okay, this is my whole freaking argument. Where it's like, and it goes exactly back to your point when you're <laughs> saying nobody asked this poor baby. Right. Nobody even asked them. So right. yeah, twenty three years later, forty years later, eighteen years later. I think that you should be able to go to the vital records and say, right. um, we've got a little bit of an error here. Yes. This was is never not my correct Oops. gender marker. Right, right. But so, they call it Scrivener's error. So it has to be like an error by the hospital or by oh the gosh. vital records department. Oh, my gosh. My argument still stands that it was still an error. Made by- <laughs> yes. Yes. Because, I mean, it has to do with I mean, it still has to do with identity. To, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on this. But so, OK. Sorry, I've, yeah. I've interrupted you. This is like the 17th time I think I interrupted you. Sister organizations now. Um, so uh, <laughs> various other states yeah. um, have seen the need for this. And um, through different organizations like Equality Arizona, um, they have a website that kind of guides you through it. Um, I know that uh, um, a lot of states will have Facebook groups that are, again, these are all grassroots um, generated by the community that needs it. Okay. So I know that for Texas, for sure, has a very robust Facebook group. Um, really? Where, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, um, I mean, that's that's pretty much what it is. It's it's It just pops up yeah. as needed. I know New York has one. Um, right. Uh, but they're all different, differently organized. Okay. And, and that comes because every state has the... Different you have laws, to help me with different terminology. procedures. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because every state can define that process, I guess. But wh- why would there – I'm trying to – like, why would you – Are we going to have a like, discussion about sure federalism was, right now? Well, you know, actually, unfortunately, I think I was going down that route. And that's why I went, you know what, let me, <laughs> let me hold off a moment. But Because, right. like, a, it seems to me like a national organism – Organism, Mm -hmm. organization, national organisms, fine too, I guess. But yeah, but like a national organization that handles things like vital records, Mm -hmm. because here's like sorts. Here's the thing too. According to Colorado, I mean, this you'll have you correct me where I got this wrong, but like my process, whatever. Call I went and filed something. Colorado, the state recognized now my recognized me as a person by a new name by amethyst Salina, mm-hmm. and that's all that's necessary ultimately Correct. it's basically it's like a uh what was uh, not approval but um what do you call that it's like, like the it's, state, it's a court it, process it's, it's i mean but like with like a birth certificate it's the same kind of thing we i mean yeah. you know the state recognizes okay this is an entity who has this name mm-hmm. but like the federal government doesn't give a good goddamn because I went to the social security, social security. office. Yeah. Yeah. I knew that's where I this was to, going. I went there and the, the dudes, you know, the dudes like, um, you, you know, he's like, Oh, okay. Just changing your name. All right, cool. You know, mm-hmm. types it in. It was like a 20 minute process. And I'm like, hang on. Like I'm done. And he goes, yeah. Yep. And I said, but what, like, what was all that? Mm-hmm. And he goes, nothing. You're a number to you us. You are a number. You, you are literally and I went, a number. You've got to be. So why is this so fucking hard? I don't think I said that to the social security guy, but I might have. You know, honestly, like you, you might have said it with your eyes a little bit. I probably, but the guy's like, yeah, I'm sorry. You're a number to us. We don't care what yep. your label is. If you end up paying taxes, we're just going to use the number. So, you know, like call yourself whatever you want. Lemon Fresh yep. Pledge. We'll take your taxes. Yeah. Miss Pledge. So, up. right. So I'm tr- like, I really honestly, like, what is, why is this so difficult? Why would states make this? This is where we're going to go. Yes. Right. Like, this why do states, why do they care? Why do, would a state give a good goddamn? Why is that? Money. Oh, Money. come on. Really? It, That's why. That's why. I'm, I'm, so, maybe I'm, I, I'm not getting it. Why? Okay. What so. Money? Like pay, okay. paying for records, paying for vital records and vital record changes? So there are two reasons uh, that 
right, so when, when you change your name, um, you have to give the court an explanation. They ask, okay, I, sure. why are you seeking this name change? Sure, yes. There are two reasons that they do not want to hear. To commit fraud. <laughs> sure. Um, or to avoid debts and uh, like warrants. Sure. Right? Um, also, uh, if – so there's, there's, there's certain oh, exceptions. Yeah, I guess people of also which... have to publish their name yeah. changes. Sure. Well, in some places, not Colorado, obviously. Uh, if you're trans and so. non-binary and a couple of other exceptions, you oh, don't have to you, publish. Oh, but you do if you're – Uh-huh. Every other ooh, name change, shoot. you have to give notice by publication. Okay. And there are two reasons for that. They want to make sure that you're not avoiding debts. Sure. Oh, and money. Told you. And told that you're you. not going to commit fraud, which has that to do with That you're not going to commit fraud or money. you're dodging like a criminal or a civil case. Sure, sure. So the and, other and reason is because um, – I'm trying to think of a way to word it. Uh I mean, that that's going to uh, understand. Is that... <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm trying to be coherent, oh, which is okay, a that's massive cool struggle for me. I got um, it. Yeah. It's getting late. <laughs> mm. So the other thing is, is because there's just, there's so many people like, and, and things have gotten so convoluted. Like it, it used to be, it used to be where you could assume a name simply by use. Oh, there are some I mean, states it seems that normal, right? Um, you know, and I mean, in, in the most typical or I guess more common, it's folks that go by their middle name. Oh, I see. Sure. So like my, uh, my aunt, for example, I never even knew her first name until I was like in my twenties. Sure. She never used it. And so eventually things and accounts and records just dropped her first name completely. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Because she never okay. used it. Sure. Because she never used it. It was only when I was over there and I remember I saw a piece of mail and I was like, oh, I was like, do you want me to go put this back in the, in the mailbox? Because this isn't for right. you. Is this for like and a sister? Like, no, no, no. Is this? Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can't do that anymore because people were using it to avoid debts and commit fraud. Sure. Okay. No, I mean, it makes it, it that much makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, it does make sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that being said, I guess, you know, now it feels to me anyway, <clears throat> it feels a little bit like, like making this difficult, making this difficult has become a political statement. Oh, a hundred percent. All right. Well, I was trying to, I was trying to dial it down just a touch, but yeah, I mean, you know, no. like what, you know, just, just, and I, I, I mean, God, there's so much I could say around that, you know, the, yeah. the, the idea of living free, right. Yeah. Which is a very U S you know, American Should sort of be. however else you want to say, right. Be. Concept that you go, look, you know, we are, we are rugged individuals. I just happen to be rugged. Autonomy. In my individualism. Autonomy. Yeah. yeah. Individualism. Just, all I want to do is call myself a different name and you would right. think, Right. That would be a rallying point where you go, yeah, right. shit, you want to be individual? Oh, my gosh. Go for it. Honey, go be individual. Do you. Yeah. Right. Or at the very least, change your name. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. either way. So Colorado is actually a really, really one of the really, really good states in yes. that, yes, you do have to go through the court process for a name change. But the courts here could not give a rat's ass about your gender marker. You sure. do not in the, in a good way, meaning that the yes. court has absolutely no involvement. There is no legislating uh, mm -hmm. or no legis legislation um, saying that you have to have a court order to uh, correct your gender marker. It's all taken care of by state agencies. So you correct your gender marker with DMV, 
You do that through their own process. Sure. You do it with vital records. You do it with passport. You do all of that. The courts want no involvement of it because it's not their business. Sure. States like Texas, you have to have the court order for your name change and sure. the court order has to also correct your gender marker. Um, so in states very widely – um, hmm. as to what their requirements are. And again, that's our discussion of federalism. Um, sure, sure. But Colorado actually is one of the states that, I don't want to say has depoliticized it, um, but has decided in the correct way in that the courts, the, you are the expert on you. Sure. Not anyone else. I've always, you know, I got to tell you, I've always kind of wondered, I mean, from the, from the day I got my first California driver's license, mm -hmm. which by the way, you know, learning to drive in Los Angeles, I, I think was actually a boon. I got to take, cause if now I drive, drive there. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I remember being in Georgia and there were like four cars around me and a friend of mine goes, God, look at all this traffic. And I went, where? Are we seeing goes, the same thing? Right. I'm going, yeah. oh, no. You should go to the 405 101 I was about to say, there's a big difference between four cars <laughs> and the 405. Yes. yes. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. I got my California, driver, Cal, bleh, my California driver's license. And I remember looking at it and I went, why does this have like a sex on it? Because mm -hmm. it's got like a picture, right? I mean, I mean, somebody could just, well, is this you? You know, they hold, I'm like, pretend I'm holding it up to your face. Right, right yeah. You know? But you know, it's like, well, that, it looks like you. I mean, that's mm -hmm. cool. Okay. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm not going to go, hang on. It looks like you. Could you unzip your pants? Drop your pants. Thank you. Thank I mean, you. what the hell is it? What's it going to do for you? I never saw any utility to that. I see a little bit when you for with a birth certificate but even then i just kind of go what i mean mm -hmm. if you end up having kids it's just like okay you had a kid i don't i don't so like yeah now that being said i i have always seen gender as very a a, a very fluid yeah process and everything and i get it on different from a lot of people in a lot of ways and that's only in one of them a lot of, of good ways some of them good, but I don't know. I just, what's like, why do, why do we even, is why there a legal purpose so to it? Yeah. Is there a league, any legal purpose? I mean, you said the courts don't care. Mm -mm. Eh, okay. Not in Colorado. So I'm asking questions. <laughs> I'm asking questions that you're like, yeah, yeah. Stupid question. Eh. No, it's not. The, the was, question isn't stupid. No, the way that sorry. we deal with it is stupid. <laughs> right. The answer, I guess. But, yeah. Um, there was something I can forgive me. I forget the name. I, for some reason, I want to say Megan's law. And I don't think that's it. Jude's the, law. Jude's law. You thank you. Jude's it was like two, 2017. I think it was in Colorado. Uh, 2019. 20, oh, 19. Oh, as you know, mm -hmm. I was going to say 2019, but I thought that seemed too early. Nope. 2019. But, you were right. All right. So, so Jude's law. No, I wasn't. Cause I said 2017. You were going to anyway, be right. I was going to be. So, but Jude's law, um, mm -hmm. it, it did, it made it so that gender marker became meaningless, right? I mean, the, 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 the real outcome of that. Well, you still have to, you still have to, um, like you still have to have it on Colorado driver's license, but what it did, okay. did a couple of different things. One of them it was, it removed the surgical requirement to correct oh, your gender okay. marker on a driver's license in Colorado. Okay. Um, sure. it gave the option for X as a gender marker on sure. state, uh, documents. So driver's license and birth certificate. Um, and it okay. also removed the publication requirement for trans and non-binary folks. So if you are changing okay. your name to align with your correct gender identity, you are exempt from that publication requirement. And presumably at least part of that is to protect privacy and safety, the safety. Yeah. I mean, I think so of safety. if the, if the, if the, the legal, the legalese around it is if the, uh, 
privacy and safety of the individual concerns outweigh public benefit, uh, the public benefit necessity. I see. Yeah. yeah. Which is good because I know I, I saw, you know, publishing it in the newspaper and I thought, yeah, oh, gosh, the last thing I want to do is like stick my old name in the newspaper. Yep. And I mean, you know, there was a reason I was changing it. So, right. Um, I mean, I want to so because, you know, you saw the show notes. I had one question, you know, is mm-hmm. is a national organization possible? And I guess the quick answer love is no. I would love it, though. I would love it. Because here's the thing. If we had a national organization, and here's the thing. The ACLU does it. The ACLU does it. Every state has different laws, but you have a national ACLU, Mm. and you have state uh, um, uh, chapters. chapters. Yeah, okay. And so you can work on things in a national level, but then each state can deal with their own um, idiosyncrasies, their own sure. uh, laws. And I think that, I mean, in, at our board for CNCP, uh, sure. I mean, that has been something that has been discussed more than a handful of times is that I see two things. We would love for there to be uh, a blank name change project for every state. (laughs) Right, right. The other thing is that we want to eventually not exist. Of course. We want to not be needed. We want it to be easy, simple, or just done away with. (laughs) Yes. Yes, agreed. again... Going back to kind of what I said at the beginning, this is the system that we have. It is true, not true. great. We have to work within the system that we have now to right. try to make it as accessible and yeah. fair and and and, and just as possible. So right. that's why right. we exist right now. Right. Well, well, thank you because for the most part. What you've done is made, you know, it made my life easier and it certainly made, you know, the lives of my brothers, siblings and sisters much easier. So I certainly appreciate that from the the bottom of my little purple heart. Um, are, you know, the thing is, we've talked. All, I mean, I, I keep on bringing up, you know, transgender issues but but this i mean the changing your name is you know we joked about um other like you get a name that that you that you don't want Mm -hmm. um so you know the names when you go and change your name it isn't necessarily about gender what like i'm curious i'm trying to figure out how to ask this question do you have people who come to identity reasons yeah i mean like do you have and like do you have people who came into workshops at some point and they walked in and they went looked around and they saw like a room full of me's and went i think i'm gonna keep my name robert e lee so too many f- purple haired i'm out of here you know no I don't um know. i th- what i think you're asking is that like so and yes we have had some people that are that are cisgender show up at our workshops and I'll tell them I'm like hey like you're going to get some helpful information out of this not everything is going to apply to you um but the the procedure is largely the same also please be aware that you will have to publish but um I've gotten uh I've gotten parents that have um uh contacted us uh one in particular um was a uh, m- mom of a uh, younger uh younger like like i don't know one or two or something maybe, oh okay whatever. um and had given the kiddo father's surname okay father turned out to be a giant piece of crap. Oh, okay. That's true to say somebody and, else, but it's okay. Oh, no. Father turned out to be a giant piece of crap. And so mother was like, I know that, like, you might not be able to help. And I was like, oh, yes. Yes, we can. Um, she wanted to give... Uh, she wanted to change the surname to one of... to, to, to be with her family. Sure. Um, absolutely. You can do that. 
We've okay. had uh, folks that have contacted us um, like in their teens or early 20s and saying, I don't want anything to do with my family. With, okay. um, and they're not, some, some have been trans, some are not. Um, you know, my parents were very abusive to me and mm-hmm. I don't want to carry their name. Sure. Absolutely. Sure. And that has to do with identity. That has mm-hmm. to do with, very I was much. given a name that right. I no longer identify with. Yep. I was given a name that brings me pain to carry. Yeah. And I want to have that agency. I want my agency. I want my auto- my autonomy. Right. Um, so that's a reason uh, to change. We've had folks that or another reason is, let's say you're getting married and you don't necessarily want to pick either one of the surnames. You don't have to. Y'all can get together and pick a new family. Just make a, a new, new family one? name. Yeah. Absolutely. I had two really good friends that did that because really? they they, oh, wow. yeah, they didn't want to pick one or the other. So they just picked a completely different one that they both loved. I wish I do. You yeah. know, I, when I, when I was changing my name, I thought really strongly. I'm like, you know what? I could get the hell out of my family. And then I realized, but I'm going to get the hell out of like the rest of my family, my right. wife and kids. And maybe I don't want to do that. And it's not maybe, I mean, I didn't, want to leave them behind i didn't sure. even think about the idea that the three of us you could pick could a just... completely new one i mean so yep i think that'd be great personally yeah. but yeah you know i had a um i had a friend this goes back a long time this is like i don't know a lot of years ago who cares mm-hmm. um like 30 is my point and it was a guy I knew. I'm not going to say his whole name, but his his last name was Slaughter. Oh which, yeah, okay. which was not a you know not it was, apparently it was because I was in Georgia, right? It was apparently sure. a com a commonish name. Sure. Anyway, Slaughter. He was going to this uh, the story just he was going to go. It was going to med school, mm-hmm. oh. and he wanted to be a he wanted to be a surgeon, Doctor Slaughter. Hi, I'm your surgeon, Dr. Slaughter. Ready to go under the knife? Right. You're like, no, I am out of here. Are you for real? Okay. So, that speaks to my little gothy heart. I would be like, I trust you implicitly. <laughs> well, I, you know, the he told me that right at the time I had all the black and, you know, mm-hmm. um, actually didn't look very different to what I look now oh, with the exception like, of hair yeah. color. Come to think of it. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, he said that. And I was like, God, that'd be so cool. I was like, could you that'd imagine that? Yeah. And he's like, no, no, it would be terrible. People would not trust me. And I went, well, yeah. I mean, because I do. So you're right. It's right. Maybe right. It turned out and, and I'm not even there. There it had to be so like some weird legal thing, because, again, this was Georgia. OK, because mm-hmm. he wanted he wanted to change his name and it ended up being like a big, huge pain. And he thought he mm-hmm. was not going to be. Uh, not going to be able to. And then somehow I want to say it turned out like his mother told him he was adopted or something. Like, I don't, like, I don't even remember okay. exactly the, the name that he had wasn't strictly applicable. Like he wasn't really sure. related to the, the person and gotcha. And so this was enough of a loophole for Georgia to say, Oh yeah, sure. Okay. You know, you don't, you don't need to be Dr. Slaughter then. Okay. So he, he was able to do it, but I remember at the time going, God, who cares? Why is anybody? Why is this right. all? Thing? I also pulled out my driver's license and held it up against him and went, "You don't look a thing like me." Thing, yeah. Huh. I don't know why I pulled out my driver's license. <laughs> I don't know why I'm shoving it apparently in a bra cup or something. I don't it's know. It's a bra pocket. But it's a bracket. It's a, bra- a bracket. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I have one last question that, sure. that, you know, what the hell, throw it out here. I can come up with a reason, but like, have you seen um, people who have come in uh, wanting to change gender marker who don't identify as transgender or non-binary? No. You, okay. So you have not seen, I have you have, not just haven't experienced it. Okay. 
So I've come across the opposite. I've come across people that want to change their names and are trans uh, or non-binary, but do not wish to change their gender marker. That I've come across, but I've never come across someone who is like cisgender and wants to change their gender marker like that. Sure. I have not come across that. Yeah. Because I have a couple of acquaintances now who are intersex and we're, we're, you know, for lack Mm -hmm. of a better way of saying this, you know, reassigned based on what the parents decided. They said, I think, I think I'd really like to have a boy. And so the doctor went, yeah, cool. You know, what the hell? Right. And, um, or vice versa. And, uh, had a point. Oh, and, and I, I know that, there's, I mean, there's one person I'm thinking of in particular. I, I actually just met her recently who mm. said her parents decided that, but the whole time she was going, I don't get it. And then sooner or later, right. she went to like a, like a doctor, like she was like 18 or something, went to a, mm-hmm. to a doctor who went, do you realize you also have a vagina? Yep. And, yep. and this, this person went, oh crap, really? Right. What? what? Oh, I'm changing. Like I'm changing all yeah, kinds I'm of changing. stuff about this. Yeah. Yeah. I, Late teens, I want now, to I'm say. I'm not saying I... that that never happens because that's an absolutely perfect example. I've just not come across. Sure, sure. Right. Um, but, and I'll tell you why, it's really cool. So, um, and this is just if anyone wants to look it up also. Um, sure. That's, uh, so, uh, awesome person named Dana Zim. Okay. Um, Google. Uh, uh, is the reason that passports now have X gender marker. Um, so, and I, uh, I believe so um, Dana is intersex. Okay. And uses the X gender marker and was like, sure. I, but I need passport. I am not M. I am not F. Right. Right. I am X. Like I am, I am a third marker so sure. i would be committing perjury basically to get if i use right <laughs> like, right and so thank you dina zim for fighting the good fight and right. now we have x on a federal document on a right. federal right. identity document mm-hmm. um and then colorado is one of the states that was like oh yeah that makes sense hey uh vital records dmv do the x thing just change it, yeah. Yeah. There, are, there are people who who will who will listen to this and end up coming back to me and going, "Amy, what the hell? You didn't like force a distinction between sex and gender that we use M and F." Oh yeah. As gender marker, uh-huh. when 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 male and female have to do only with species level reproductive characteristics, right? And gender. I watched your sh- I watched your presentation on that. Oh gosh, that's right. You did. <laughs> yes, I did. But I totally forgot that. Because mm-hmm. you know, it was funny. I was, I was, I started saying something about you know my story when I was young, and I thought, God, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if she'd like seeing that that presentation. And you, and, oh, was and great. I guess you did. So, well, thank you. I mean, I appreciate. So, that. I want to add on that. So, like, <laughs> I'm going to leave that to you. I'm going to leave that to biologists. I'm just sure. Smarter people well, than me. Right. What I'm going to say is, I don't than give us. a fuck. I yeah. believe you. Like, I believe people. Sure. Uh, You are the expert on you. And if you tell me that you identify as a male, I'm going to say, awesome. If you tell me that you are, like, you're femme, I'd be like, awesome. I love that for you. I'm going to believe you. because, And I'm relying... And I want it to be a place where that's the norm. I want to rely on you to tell me right. who you are. Right. And once you tell me who you are, I'm going to be like, great. That's that's awesome. Hi, I'm Shannara. Nice to meet you. I use she, her, yada, yada. Right. And like – do you want to go order first or am I? Who wants the coffee first? <laughs> right. There you go. Are we, do we want to get in line? Like, yeah. that's what I want it to be. Like, you are the expert on yourself. Sure. And sure. you are the one that should be able to give yourself a moniker, a label, a right. category, 
right. um, a, a, a uh, an asset, a, 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 a your identity. You yes. should be the one that dictates that. You know, <clears throat> I think Colorado is a is a state that's like this. There are some states you don't have to be registered in a particular party to vote in the primary. Right. Yeah. But we we try. I think Colorado is. I think Col- or sorry, Colorado. You do need to be registered no, I, I, to to vote in that. I point. think you. I no? think if you're not. If you're unaffiliated, you get oh, okay. both ballots, but you can only really? return oh. one. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, in any event, my point was going to be like we trust people to say what political affiliation they are. We trust mm-hmm. people to 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 describe their political affiliation so that yep. they can vote for a nominee for the highest office in the land. Uh huh. But then we go, yep. but well, hang on, you want to wear a skirt? Wait oh. a second, yeah. Not Draw sure I can line. go this far. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, highest office in the land, that's one thing, but 10 bucks says you're going to end up wearing white after Labor Day anyway. So no, <laughs> right. no skirts for you. No skirts for you, but they're spinny and twirly. I know. And See, I that's the one. thing. Right. That's the bomber. Right. Yeah. And so many people out there want to. And for some reason, you know, we, we have to say, nope, you, you are not going to be allowed to spin. Yeah, that is. You are allowed to vote in the Republican primary, though, so live it up. Right. Just don't wear your skirt there, I guess. Not to the ballot box. Right. I mean, unless you're going to be wearing white after Labor Day, and then at least the people at the ballot, what do they call that? Like the polling place? Yeah, polling station. Okay, thank you. Yeah. At least then they'll go, I don't think, I don't think she's a woman, at least in part because of her poor fashion sense. I know. Sense. Could you believe that? Look at that. Wearing white after Labor Day. After what the hell Labor happened Day? there? Oof. A scandalo. Shame. Is it right? <laughs> See? So I think on that note, maybe we should we should we should bring it home. Uh, sure. <laughs> when you get into fashion, when you start with names and you end up with fashion. Eh, you know. Right. Um Shannara, I have spoken to you what? hundreds or thousands of times and every time yeah. i go you know what i need more hundreds and thousands thank you same just All so same-sy. much i cannot believe um i can't believe that the the work that you do i'm gonna end up crying jesus <clears throat> i can't believe because you'll make me cry i know it i know it i'm trying not to but i i can't believe the work that you do for for like for our community for my community and um yeah, it just means a lot. I mean, when I met you, uh, it just it changed my life. So you oh, have done the it, same I'm for me. Cry. <laughs> oh, You've well, done the same you. for me. See, nope, nope. Look up and blink. I'm, I, I know. I'm blink. trying really hard. I'm trying really hard. Um, and that's the thing is like again, it's my so I because I'm cis, I'm also white. I went to law school. Like these sure. are privilege, privilege, privilege. Some they shouldn't be, but they are well, right. working within the system that yes. has been created. Why would I not? How could I not? And everyone deserves to be themselves. Everyone deserves to live authentically. Yes. And I, so I'll end it with this. Right before um, uh, we started this podcast, I was working through our micro grants. I'm like a month behind, um, but people can apply to us for oh, micro grants, right? Because right. yeah, so the trans community is obviously very historically discriminated against, disenfranchised um, in employment, in housing, in education absolutely horrific like it's it's disgusting that that's the case it's it sure it's angering um and that's what i was doing before we started this was i was getting and i'm the one that gets to do this i get to go through these microgreen applications and i get to say approved 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 right. here's oh, here's money Go get your name. Go change changed. your name. Yes. Go, Go assert get your yourself. Name Go get your fingerprints. Go file with the court. 
Right. Right. And sometimes people will type little things as to why they want this micro grant. And sometimes I have to get up from my computer and I'm like, I'm so sorry that you're going through this. Like, fuck, now I'm crying. I'm so sorry right. that you have been attacked, that you have been passed over for jobs, that your family isn't supportive of you, but I'm so happy that they found their way to us. And I get to sit here and I'd be like, fuck everything else. Here's money. Yes. Right. Go get your name change. Yes. Go get your legal name change. So whew. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. It is. No, Shannara Quissel, I honor you. I, I could not, I, I'm so happy. And that's the other thing is I met you and you have been like one of like my besties, like you're amazing. <laughs> and well, what you thanks. do I mean, is you are lighting the way you are putting yourself out there you are being vulnerable you're being honest and you're showing people this is normal life this is this is a day in the life of amethysta right. and in doing that you are you're you're visible and that means so much to people so so thank you <clears throat> you're welcome I mean, because because I will tell you, there is, um, you know, you've brought up privilege, and I hate the word at the very least, privilege. Sure. And I will certainly say, yeah, I spent fifty two years, white, you know, man mm -hmm. walked in places, and it was it was very different from walking in places now, looking like I do, and and. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess if I can make anybody, you know, if I can make it easier for anybody else, you know, I think I ended up, I ended up in the same place with what you were saying that if I yeah. can do this, why would I not? Why would you not? If I can there leave the place a little better than I did when we got here, why would I not? Bingo. So bingo. You just, you just summed it all up. So Oh, I love All right. you, Ami. I know. Look at this. I can't believe this. I'm going to do the same. <laughs> well, thank thank you so much. I mean, gosh, I could sit here and talk to you for the next 20 I know. years. <laughs> we I mean, both we just need to go have dinner. I, when we just talked last night, I think that's the best thing. Like We talked for like two hours <laughs> last did. night. Was, hey, did. let's record a podcast and talk for another two hours. And I was like, sure, oh, why tomorrow. not? Right. I love it. Yeah, and then, well, thank and you then for having this me. weekend we'll hang out and stuff. And right. No, yeah. thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks right. so much. Well, you have a wonderful night. Thank you. You too. What? And good uh -huh. goodbye and good night to all your viewers. Bye. Or listeners. Or listeners. Right. We don't want to discri discriminate against other color boots. Oh, wait a minute. That's from Mystery Science Theater 3000. That's from MST 3K. Not yeah, that's from uh, Girl in Gold Boots, right? Girl in Gold yes. Boots. Yes. Get your gold boots moving or your silver Yet boots. Yet another reason why twos. we will always be friends. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. Got to shut it down. Thank you, Shannara. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.